the all new Honda sharing the same platform as the Civic and the CRV. Ocean Honda has given us the 2023 Honda HRV two wheel drive sport in platinum white pearl over black interior. This is nearly 10 inches longer than the prior gen and increased power because we have the powertrain off of the Civic. So that's gonna help us get onto the interstate opposed to the prior gen, which was a lot slower than this variant going against rivals like Toyota, Mazda and Hyundai. But the best part about this is if you do not wanna option a CRV, you can get the savings and you have nearly the same length Length of vehicle. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm going to go over all the specs and details starting now. The Honda HRV has a more sleek look. It's a bit more pronounced in the front. It's very similar grill setup to the Civic, and it should be because of the platform. LED headlamps and daytime runnings. Grill pattern will have more of a dynamic look on the lower bumper. You're going to have the C structure for your air curtain that go and brush over these upgraded 18 inch multi-spoke gloss black alloy wheels because this is the sport package. Increased clearance at seven to about 7.3 inches, 58 42 weight distribution. So we've got a little bit better with our dynamic setup. A front strut suspension, a multi-link rear suspension, both the front and the rear will have your coil springs and your anti-roll bars. That sport package also gives you the gloss black for the side view mirror caps. And on the lower roof spoiler, lower bumper, you'll get the matte black that'll integrate also onto the sport badging. The lower skirt, it's a more settled look. This is now the newest, largest subcompact SUV. At 179.8 inches, a wheelbase at 104.5 inches. That stretched about 9.4 inches longer than the prior gen, 2.7 inches shorter than the CRV. And going back to the comparison, whether it's a Hyundai Tucson or a Hyundai Kona, both of those vehicles are going to be smaller than this. And as for the Toyota Corolla Cross, that one's going to be a little bit more traditional. LED taillights, and you get the gloss black that's going to surround it. So, yet again, paying attention to detail, towing unfortunately is under a thousand pounds. Non-power tailgate going inside to 24 cubic feet. We do get a 12 volt LED interior lights and it widens up and it's a little bit lower of an entrance. Inside here, you have some storage and you also have a spare tire. Split fold the rear bench if you're tall like me in the back and that will increase your cargo to 55 cubic feet at a 60-40 split. This is the Civic powertrain. Let's go inside, start up, so you can hear that exhaust note. Finally getting an increase in power, which is something that when I used to review the prior gen, I would complain about quite a bit because it took forever to get onto the interstate. And you don't really want that when you're getting an everyday vehicle. You want it to have that pep and go and Honda backs the performance with a 2.0 liter inline four cylinder producing 158 horsepower and 138 pound-feet of torque that's paired to a CVT transmission, achieving 26 to 32 MPGs. That's good for a zero to 60 around 9.4 seconds with a quarter mile, just a hair over 17 seconds. Stopping 70 to zero under 175 feet. And what does this mean? It's faster than the prior gen. It's still going to be slower than the Mazda CX-30, whether you get the turbo or non-turbo. Whenever you're looking at these numbers, it's not something you're gonna take on the track anyways. It's still gonna be faster than the Toyota Corolla Cross. It's going to be faster than the Hyundai Kona with more horsepower. It's about the same speed as the Tucson. It's gonna have less horsepower than pretty much all of the rivals. But you're expecting that because this is a smaller vehicle, even though they've increased the length nearly 10 inches. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2023 Honda HRV Sport as we go inside, go over the tech and take this for our drive. 
For the HRV, getting inside is not an issue because of the way it is for ground clearance. Headroom at 39.4 inches, legroom at 38 inches. Black and orange contrast, bucket front seats, cloth, six-way manual adjustment for the driver, four-way manual for the passenger. The dashboard gets the hexagonal pattern for your air vents, similar to the CRV, except you get the soft materials up here in your everyday materials behind the seven inch standard touch screen. We do not have navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Put it into reverse, we have a reverse camera with trajectory and you can change the camera lineup to make it easy for your reversing. Single climate control, heated front seats, a storage pocket for a larger cell phone with a USB port. Cup holders with a big bulge here, soft materials, and that contrast stitching leather wrap around your gear lever. You have your driver mode select, but you can change it from normal, eco, and snow. You have your heel descent, brake hold, which is a nice luxury feature, his and her USB ports with a pass-through. So this is something that I really do enjoy because it just makes it easy for everybody to have their own charger. It's gonna be soft for your elbows, open up inside, and it's a pretty deep storage pocket, pushed back a little bit with a three-spoke leather wrap steering wheel. It is definitely going to be multi-function with the gloss black that's going to surround it. Going into your gauge cluster, you have a digital reader that you can go through an array of information for the driver. The dashboard and the door panels integrate together. We do not have any upgrade sound system. You have to go to a higher tier. Everyday materials up here, soft for your elbows down, soft for your elbows down here. One touch up and down for all the windows in the front, not in the back, and a pretty decent storage pocket. For the back seats, I'm at 38 inches of headroom, 38 inches of legroom. You don't have anything to rest your elbows here. For the door panel, everyday materials on the top firm for your elbows and a smaller storage pocket. Sitting into the center, headroom is still no issue because the way the roof is, it actually bubbles out. Leg space, the same thing. Sharing feet, butt, and shoulder space, even though it's on the same platform as the CRV, you will have more space in the CRV if you're comparing it to this. But for the size of this vehicle, it actually is pretty decent considering it's around three inches less in length than the CRV. Increase of 17 horsepower and 11 pound feet of torque more than the prior gen. Doesn't necessarily sound like a lot, and because this has increased 9.4 inches, is it going to be enough really to push it? We only get one engine option in North America. In Europe, they will offer a hybrid option, which will be off of the Accord and the Insight, which I kind of wish they did that here, but to see the performance, let's go. It gets up to speed it does take a little bit of time to do so but that's pretty much expected it does feel a lot more wider and it does feel a lot more longer the interior has a lot more space so i think they did a good job balancing everything except for the engine option i kind of wish it had a little bit more pep to it so that way it can get you to point a to point b a little bit quicker because what happens is those zero to 60s i usually talk about them because when you're getting onto the interstate that's where it becomes an issue for an everyday drive you're going to hear a drone like engine note pretty much always because you're going to be hitting around two to three rpms everywhere you go to get the thing up to speed that's going to take me to some things i like and dislike and that's what we're going to go over right now starting off with what i like is now you have optimal interior space this is still a subcompact suv but it's the largest in its segment the second thing that i like about it goes again to the interior specs because it's so much longer than the prior gen and wider than the prior gen this outperforms every variant for interior space so you can option this car and you don't have to sacrifice when you're trying to fit five adults and have cargo obviously for towing you would but usually with the hrv you wouldn't be towing anyways the last thing that i like about the vehicle is honda has changed the dashboard setup just a touch adding these soft materials on top of the 
hexagonal seamless air vents. It's the only variant that does this. So it almost gives you like a sedan segment in the interior. You don't feel like the dash is overly long, nor do you feel the hood. Very sporty and athletic. Three things that I dislike, you no longer have the magic seat for the passenger where you can fit an eight foot canoe inside. That would be awesome if they still offered that because this is 9.4 inches longer. Red light, we got it in normal because there's no sport mode. No need to be eco-friendly here. Green light, let's rock and roll. That brings me to the second thing that I dislike, pairing this with a CVT transmission. And I know a lot of the competition is trying to do the same thing, but it really makes the vehicles a lot slower than they need to be. The last thing that I dislike goes to the back seats. I wish that they made the seats adjustable where you can recline them. They're already more or less at a recline. It just would be nice that you can move them even further back because you have so much cargo capacity in this new gin and it's a lot longer in the interior. Going back to the Rivals, this is going to have a lot more interior space, a lot more cubbies for storage, and you got your his and her USB port. So that way you can separate each other as if this is a driver focused car even though the setup is nowhere like that brakes you can see no problem turn radius at more or less a stop point is going to get about two lanes let's rock and roll into traffic i mean it's going to get noisy as you get up to speed, there's really no way around it. You're at a lower MSRP, which is a good thing. This is an affordable vehicle and you have more practical space than any of the rivals. As for dynamics, you're not gonna be doing it too much. It's gonna be more boaty. It does feel wider though. So that is something to take in consideration from the prior gen. However, all of the new SUVs are relatively similar to size, maybe plus or minus five to seven inches, which is not a huge difference. Just when you go from a generation to generation, increasing it nearly 10 inches, it is a huge difference because that vehicle was a lot smaller, kind of similar to the Hyundai Kona, where now the Hyundai Kona is so much smaller than this one. For the comfort inside, the seats are pretty comfy. They're not going to be as wide as some of the rivals. So when you get into the Tucson, it's gonna be a little bit more wider, but it's gonna be a little bit more tighter for your armrest area. So depending on your dimensions, it might be a little bit more of a, not claustrophobic because you have large windows similar to this. It's just the way the tightness is of the width. I do like how the A pillars are pushed back here because it gives a wider visual front exit so it makes it a lot easier for me to see everything in front of me and in the back even though we have that coupe like sort of design you still got that third window so it helps with that with the blind spot monitoring it's a slower variant so if you're going onto the interstate don't try to pass a tractor trailer truck maybe just slow it down and then get it up to speed put it in cruise and get into the middle lane i like to thank ocean honda for giving us this 2023 honda hrv for our car review if you're already a subscriber thank you for being part of the hawkeye community if not i don't know what you're waiting for click the next video and the subscribe button check out the merchandise website and instagram and everything we do here at hawkeye rides